Hello and welcome to this lecture series on data migration. In our previous video, we had seen how to import FBDI files manually into Oracle Fusion Cloud apps. We had considered the example of importing suppliers wherein we generate FBDI file using XLFSM template and that FBDI file we have first of all uploaded to UCM uh, by navigating to file import op export option in our Fusion instance. Then we had run this uh, process that is load interface file for import. Then we had run the import supplier ESS job. Then we had verified the suppliers from the procurement subject area that is by navigating to manage suppliers. In this video, we are going to learn how to do this uh, with the help of Oracle Integration Cloud, that is the automation of FBDI file from the source application into our uh, Oracle Cloud Fusion instance. There are two methods uh, how we can import this uh, FBDI file into Oracle Fusion instance using OIC. Method one is to get error, generate the file, upload the file to UCM, run the ESS job request, that is with the job name and the job path for this import suppliers, checking the status of the ESS job, and downloading the logs and continue with other activities post downloading the logs based on the ESS job completed successfully or errored out we can go on with other activities there is a method to involve and this is bit simpler process wherein we have to get or generate the file upload the file to fusion instance using the ERP adapter by selecting FBDI option wherein we skip this method wherein we first upload the UCM file then we run the uh, import supplier job here it will be done in a single step then ERP instance is going to call our callback integration this is a separate integration which we need to build wherein the trigger connection of that uh, integration uh, it will be based on this ERP adapter the callback integration instance will have the uh, logs files and based on the status of the summary of the job we can continue with other activities this is a bit simpler in the implementation uh, perspective and this is little this will take a little more steps uh, to achieve the same we are into our oracle integration cloud instance uh, first of all we have to create a connection uh, which will be based on uh, erp adapter as you can see i have created this erp learning connection which is based on the erp adapter uh, if you want to create the erp adapter you can search over here that is erp and select this one gives a meaningful name and click on create since i have already created let me open this oracle uh, erp cloud adapter wherein we have to give our uh, oracle fusion uh, instance uh, host address username and the password with which we uh, uh, log into this oracle fusion instance on completion we have to test and save once done we can consume this and build our integration give this link in the description uh, which will have the documentation on how to create a erp adapter connection what are the prerequisites uh, how to test the connection how to uh, configure connection security and stuff like that and uh, what are the operations involved in trigger request page trigger response page uh, actions page and all uh, it's been uh, highlighted over here you can uh, check out this documentation from oracle. let me switch over to oracle integration cloud uh, for saving the time uh, i have already built uh, my integration as you can see erp uh, learning int is a integration uh, which is based on this method one and uh, what you can see over here erp learning in method 2 and the erp learning in callback integration are based uh, for this method 2 let me uh, open this uh, method 1 integration let me maximize this uh, the first step is uh, get or generate the file if you are uh, getting the file uh, from ftp server or from some other source system uh, then we don't have to go for generating the file suppose i have considered the scenario wherein uh, i am not getting the file uh, directly uh, from any source application uh, i'm creating the file in our oic instance in which case i created few assign uh, variable that is a batch id uh, load status and the count load loop uh, i will explain about load status and uh, count load loop in a uh, going forward but the batch id as you all know uh, in our uh, previous video we had seen uh, batch id uh, is used to uniquely identify the rows in our um, fbdi file with the help of which we run the uh, import supplier process and uh, the suppliers which were uh, associated with a particular batch id uh, will be uh, imported uh, into the fusion instance for that purpose i have created this batch id uh, this should be dynamically changed in real time scenario i have uh, hard coded it but this you can dynamically uh, generate suppose my integration runs at uh, uh, 9 am in the morning uh, uh, in the first batch uh, so the batch id will be uh, 900 uh, and the batch id uh, and the next batch should be 901 and so on it will be a uh, continuous numbers let me close 
I have opened the FBDI file, that is CSV file, uh, which was generated in our previous video with the help of this XLSM template. But if you see over here, our batch ID in our uh, template was at the first place, but here if you see the batch ID will be at this place. So now the question will arise, uh, how will we know uh, what position will be our batch ID and what will be uh, position will be our other details like the supplier name and all. Uh, for that purpose, what we can do is uh, before generating the supplier uh, uh, file, uh, we need to create a uh, dummy uh, file by copy pasting this entire row over here uh, and click on this generate file uh, what it will do is it will uh, it will generate a, a row over here wherein we will get the column names like create is a uh, uh, import action supplier name etc and the batch id uh, will be at the so and so uh, places so that we will know which column we have to map details I have already generated such kind of CSV file uh, let me show it over here as you can see over here what I was uh, talking to you uh, in this uh, file like uh, we have to copy paste this uh, column header over here so that uh, we will know uh, what column is our import action what will be our pop batch ID and uh, what will be our end end of the file that is a and d once we have generated a sample csv file uh, what we have to do is we have to create a similar uh, file using the uh, oracle integration cloud uh, what i have done is the first step over here is creating the file uh, i have made use of the stage activity uh, if you see uh, i have given the same file what i am showing over here as a sample csv file and uh, while mapping you have to make sure you map uh, the data at the right column as you can see, I have mapped this batch ID to the C149, uh, this taxpayer ID in the C222 uh, and tag will be uh, C15. For that, what we can do is uh, we can open this uh, uh, CSV file in uh, uh, MS Office or the MS Excel and we can number these columns 1, 2, 3 so that we will know uh, what we have to map in uh, what column. Let me know in the comment section uh, if you are not able to uh, follow any of the steps so that I can uh, uh, elaborate uh, more in my next video. Click on close. So once we have generated our CSV file, uh, also one thing you have to make sure is you create a separate folder for this directory, output directory. I, I will tell you uh, why this is used input. I'm writing this file in an input directory and the next step is uh, creating the properties file. Uh, this is something new uh, which we didn't do while uh, importing the FBDI file manually using a user interface approach. Here if you see I'm uh, creating this properties file and writing into the same output directory uh, where I have written this uh, FBDI CSV file that is in the slash input directory. Uh, this dot property is also a CSV file. I will tell you uh, what in all details we need to fill in this uh, CSV file. Basically this is like a metadata of the uh, input process for what we are going to run after uploading this UCM file. Um, if you open this. Uh, this is basically a CSV file uh, what you need to generate uh, the content of which uh, will be something like uh, first should be the document path of the job next will be the uh, job path name job name uh, next will be the zip folder name which will be uploading uh, which is nothing but uh, uh, this file uh, this zip is containing this our FVDI files the name of the zip file followed by the parameters more details for this has been uh, provided uh, in this documentation so there is a white paper uh, on this uh, how to generate a, a properties file how to generate a video file uh, if you see over here job property file uh, needs to be prepared in csv format and it has a, having the properties extension uh, which is having the job or the document name job definition name inbound uh, zip uh, folder name and the parameters so uh, how will you know these uh, uh, things like the job name job definition name and the parameter list of parameter for that what we have to do is we have to log into a fusion instance go to setup and maintain work area from there we have to search for uh, uh, under the search section we have to go for this manage custom uh, enterprise scheduler jobs and uh, subject area like SCM and in that we have to search with the import suppliers as you can see over here once uh, we find import suppliers click on the edit button uh, it, it will show the name this will be our uh, job name uh, path will be our uh, job path and these are the list of the parameters this is one of the methods and other method is uh, when we run the ESS job uh, in the schedule processors from there also we will get the list of parameters or the arguments the help of which we can prepare this file dot properties file wherein uh, this will be our job path job name file name uh, zip file name and the parameters in the case of suppliers import uh, in our previous video we had seen it was asking for the new order new 
import supplier or the update and the notification uh, in case of uh, exceptions only s yes or no it was a flag and the batch id it was showing so we will be having uh, three uh, parameters in the case of import suppliers but uh, it might vary from project to project and instance to instance uh, for that purpose you have to know uh, you can you will get the details by navigating to setup and maintenance and know uh, what are the current setups in your project so uh, in my instance in my previous video we had seen we had only three parameters when running input suppliers so uh, job path and the job name we will get from the instance what about zip name uh, zip name uh, what we have to do is we have to remove this dot zip and copy only this uh, before dot zip name and copy it over here while generating our dot properties file if we switch over to this oracle integration cloud if you see uh, this is my uh, job path this is our job name and uh, this is my uh, zip name what i'm doing is zip name i'm giving it as a uh, POZ supplier int underscore and the batch ID this will be unique for every instance which will run uh, by OIC and the next uh, as we as i told we are having only three parameters new and, and batch id uh, if you are not clear uh, what i am uh, uh, talking about these parameters please check out my part two video on data migrations wherein i have explained in detail um, about how to run the ess job from the ui uh, wherein uh, these three parameters will be visible when we run the scheduled process so once we have generated our, uh, our dot properties and the dot csv file into our input directory what we have to do is we have to generate this uh, dot zip file for that uh, i'm making use of this stage activity under uh, stage activity what we can do is we can uh, use this option that is zip files uh, if you notice it over here my uh, directory to zip is our input slash input directory wherein i had written the csv file and uh, the dot properties file and uh, my output directly directory is slash output so uh, how so once the file has been generated uh, what we can do is uh, for no, uh, for uh, archiving purpose we can write that file into our F ftp server uh, this is optional uh, we can even mail the file i mean if it, if it is a huge file then we can uh, archive it into um, uh, ftp server or uh, we can archive it uh, to uh, oracle uh, cloud infrastructure uh, object storage instance as well so uh, it is a, a purely optional step uh, next step is uh, we have to upload this to ucm for what we have to do is for this purpose uh, if you see uh, after uh, getting or generating the flag next step is uploading the file to ucm for this uh, we have already created our uh, uh, upload file to ucm uh, if you see it over here we will get three options uh, wherein we have to select sign uh, files to erp uh, which is nothing but upload files to ucm uh, as it has uh, written we have to separately run the schedule process or the api uh, to run the uh, pti process so what we will do in the next step uh, here uh, we have to select the appropriate uh, security uh, realm and the document account for more details you can uh, look into on the documentation on the erp adapter uh, click on next and uh, done the next step is running uh, ess job uh, for uh, import suppliers uh, uh, we are making use of again ERP adapter over here as you can see over here uh, we are selecting this query creator update option uh, next uh, we are selecting this ERP integration service under the services and selecting submit ESS job so uh, uh, while mapping uh, uh, the data to this import supplier uh, we are just passing the batch id uh, as we had seen in a previous video uh, like uh, after uh, uploading the file to UCM uh, we had uh, while running the Report supplier ESS job from the UI we had given the batch ID uh, and the parameter as a, like a new supplier or the updating the supplier modifying uh, under notification uh, exception uh, in this uh, we are giving the three parameter details uh, the job definition name and the package name over here Uh, what we can do is uh, since uh, uh, with the method one we don't have any uh, second integration which will be called from the erp what we have to do is we have to check for the status of this uh, um, uh, supplier in your import is as job for that we can uh, make use of erp adapter again we have to go for this query create update option uh, but this time we have to go for this erp integration service get ess job status here what we have to do is we have to supply the process id what we get in the response as a, uh, a request for this job status 
as you can see it over here uh, we are passing uh, the response uh, in the result uh, we will be having only one uh, output parameter in the response that is result result is basically nothing but the uh, process id or the request id so uh, depending on the status so uh, what we can do is uh, uh, we can um, either download the logs or the, we can uh, uh, ignore this this is uh, fully uh, optional um, for downloading the logs again we are making use of this erp adapter but this time we are uh, selecting this erp integration service download ess job execution details so uh, we can uh, write that uh, uh, file to our FTP server, uh, OCI, object storage, uh, and uh, do the stuff like that. So the entire uh, steps involved uh, uh, in FPDI process with the help of st uh, method one, I've explained with this integration, uh, starting with getting or generating the file, uploading the file to UCM, running the ESS job, uh, checking the status of the job, uh, downloading the logs, and continuing with other activities if any. Uh, we will uh, learn how to uh, import the FPDI file uh, using uh, method 2 in our uh, next video. Thank you for watching this video. Please do like, comment and subscribe the channel.